because I decided for once in my life, Jordan, that somebody with our last name is going to change this generation forever. I just decided it's going to be me. And um, what I want to hand to my kids is a work ethic. What I want to hand to my kids is they saw dad in his prime. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. It's fighting in the okay, so is not for you, when it comes to entrepreneurship or any project that you're working on, do you set schedules? Because I know like entrepreneur, it's not like a nine to five, but do you still set somewhat of a rigorous, like every two hours every day from, you know, 16 to 18, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Do you still set those kind of schedules to hold yourself accountable? Oh, of course. It's, yeah, because as an entrepreneur, by the way, the benefit of being an entrepreneur, you work for the best boss, yourself. Yeah. The flip side, you also work for the worst boss, yourself. Because <laughs> you, you let yourself off the hook. You can't fire you, right? And so there's, there's, there's key areas in my life, spiritual, financial, uh, 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 spiritual fam fam family, family, and contribution. The, these are the areas that's most critical to my life. Uh, easy way to say it is faith, family, finance, and fitness. Okay? Easy way. That's my four Fs. Okay? My, my forthcoming book is going to be talking about these four Fs. I realized in my life, and Elliot and I were talking about this, I realized in my life moving to Dallas, I don't have anybody in my spiritual life stretching me anymore. Right? My spiritual relationship and mentors are in Chicago. Thank God I found a new one here in Dallas. I mean, by the way, this is a Bible belt around here. There's like a mega, yeah, I throw a football every 25 yards as a mega church. They're right next to each other, right? Yeah. And praise the Lord, right? So um, anyway, for sure, like for part of my transformation story, Jordan, is that for, uh, what, do we, what do we put on, 15 years or 20 years that I was inflamed, gout, arthritis, joints locked up, 20 years, right? Bro, for 20 years post-military, I didn't, I didn't work out. And my body, and, and uh, my wife hates it when I say this. And uh, if, if I, <laughs> ladies, don't take it out of me when I say this, okay? Don't, don't uh, any dislike buttons when I say this. But I'm one of those weird body types. You know, some, some people, if, if, they, if they don't work out, they don't, they don't do anything, they gain weight, okay? Uh, maybe chalk it up to my Filipino DNA, but if I don't eat and work out, I lose weight. It takes me 30 days to gain like five pounds. And if I don't eat right over a weekend, I'll lose that in a snap of a finger. Okay. Ladies, okay. So hopefully ladies, you don't, you don't throw stuff at me, but, uh, my wife hates it when I say it. She's just like, babe, don't you ever say that around me again. <laughs> but, but then again, my, when my body does that, it's eating itself. It's, it, uh, uh, it's eating, it's breaking down the muscle into fat. And what's cause, what causes my body is, is gout and inflammation. And that's bad. It's very bad. So when I made a dedication to, so to transform that area of my life, because how you do one thing is how you do everything. So how I ma manage my physical life, my financial life, my family life, my, my spiritual, my faith, it's going to spill over into the other things. So I can't, my mindset is I just can't slack in my finances and I expect to see that same slack in my relationship with my wife. I can't expect that same slack and lack of paying attention to my business or my, my relationship with God. I can't expect that to slack not to appear. Because now the flip side is true. Now, if I pay attention to that area, everything in my life is going to, because I want to maintain consistency across all the areas of my life. So to answer your question, yes. So three, four times a day or a week, I have to put in, I got to hit the gym. I just, I just got off a flight last night at 3.30, was in the gym this morning at 7.30, got about four hours of, of, uh, four hours of sleep. I'm at my office right now because we have a, we have a, a workshop that we're, we're teaching our guys. I got four and a half hours of sleep, but I'm telling myself too, Jordan, remember the days, you know, in the Marine Corps when we go party out all night and uh, we come back at uh, five o'clock and formations at 5.30, right? Remember those days, right? You're like hung over in, in formation, you're like standing, up, oh, right, right? If I was willing to do that for my party life, why, would I, wouldn't, why wouldn't I be willing to do this for my family, my faith? The people that, that things that are really meaningful to me in my life, because I don't remember any of the Marines or post military, any of the people I partied with from Thursday night to Sunday morning. I don't remember anybody in the phase of my life. Zero. And so, yes. So in the morning, if I don't have a chance to hit the gym because I'm dropping off the kids, I'm at the office at 8 30, 8 30 to 11, uh, 8 30 to 11 o'clock on Monday mornings. We have a typical Monday morning meetings. We drive data. Uh, I want to know where our guys are in recruiting, where our guys in selling, where our guys in uh, uh, new licensed agents. Uh, that we help them get licensed. Um, 
many different reports that uh, any new staff that we're looking to acquire or fire, th- those are the things we're talking about on Monday mornings. Le- every day, Jordan, I'm not eating lunch by myself. Every day I have to have lunch, never eat lunch alone. I'm eating uh, lunch with my guys, my staff, my seven-figure squad, squad crew, life insurance agents that I'm mentoring, agency builders that I'm mentoring, uh, centers of influence throughout the afternoon that I'm booking. So I'm booking my lunch. And if my lunches are booked, then I'm booking breakfast meetings. If my breakfast meetings are booked, then I'm booking dinner meetings. Uh, that afternoon, then I'm working on my own projects from one to three, one to four. Break, head home, uh, uh, throw around the kids, wrestle with the kids, you know, uh, chit chat with them with their their, uh, their school life was going, uh, what they're going on with their school life, their their uh, plays, their their practices. I told the kids, uh, listen, um, I'm not going to be at every practice, but it'll be at definitely at every game. Okay, um, uh, uh, if I don't get a work in work out in that morning, five to seven p.m., then I'm getting a work in. So my dinner time is my workout time. I'm back at the office at 7.30, and then I'm working on teaching my new guys that are part-time transition to full-time. So from 7.30 to 10, I'm working. Um, I make sure that uh, I give my kids, at least I FaceTime them before they go to bed. Uh, sometimes if, I, uh, if I'm if i at working from home, I can do that there. And then, I'm, bro, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to scare you, though, bro. I'm done like around 11.30, 12 o'clock at night, smoking a cigar in my patio. So if you ever want to reach me, Jordan, at 11.30 to 1 o'clock, most likely I'm outside in the patio smoking a cigar, doing a debrief of my day, planning for the next day tomorrow. So my day doesn't start the day of. My day starts the night before. So when I wake up, I know what to do that day. Right. And, and the, the, the challenge with that is that you're so fired up about your next day, you can't go to sleep. <laughs> I can't wait. Go to bed. I can't go to sleep. I can't. I'm so excited. I want to call him right now. You know, these type of things. I'm just fired up because Jordan, I finally found a purpose for me for life after the military. And I think that's where a lot of guys don't know where their transition is after post-military or if they ever discovered when they were in the military is finding what, what gets you, what makes you jump out of bed every morning. I finally found that. And so now, you know, 12, 14 hour days are the minimum. But for those of you with families, I integrate my kids with inside my day. So if I don't get to see my kids, you know, they're here at the office or I go see them at the house, I'm working from home. Uh, I, tra- I travel with the kids. Um, the kids are seeing me. My, my example of being a good father is not being around them 24 uh, seven. Sometimes people have parent guilt because either they're raised by a single mom or a single dad or they didn't spend a lot of time with their parents growing up. I don't have that parent guilt, even though I didn't spend a lot of time with my parents growing up because I decided for once in my life, Jordan, that somebody with our last name is going to change this generation forever. I just decided it's going to be me. And um, what I want to hand to my kids is a work ethic. What I want to hand to my kids is I saw dad in his prime. What I want to hand to my kids is listen to me and do deals in the car listening on Bluetooth, when I'm yelling at them to be quiet in the backseat, yes, I'm on the phone. <laughs> I'm closing this deal, be quiet. You're, you're gonna learn this skill one day. By the way, my, my son now, Jordan, is 26 years old, greatest salesman. He's, he's, he's no, no matter what sales jobs he's got, he's always the leading salesperson because he heard me selling in the car while he was growing up. Right.